I've been looking at this suspension setup with the idea of putting a second suspension uh, swing arm in. Now, when you look at this one, if I take a measurement on this, the centres between um, on the pivots are eight centimetres. So, if I swing that up here, approximately there, and if I was to mount a, a half inch um, piece of bar, round bar coming out here with thread on it, you know like a bolt, half inch bolt coming through there, 13 millimeters I suppose I should say, coming out of here, that might be sturdy enough if I just had that coming out and then put a, a locking nut, castle nut on the end with a split pin through, that might be sturdy enough to um, supply a support point for the other shackle point. Now, um, swing arm, I should say. Uh, now, so basically, if I made another swing arm with centers at eight centimeters apart, I could slide that out a little bit and set that between there and there, eight centimeters. So, that would mean all I've got to do is make a second swing arm with some um, some bushings. I'm thinking putting some rubber bushings um, in both ends on this. So um, that's what I'm looking about doing now. Now, if I put them in this area here, it's directly above the other arm. So that could be a, a good place to put them. You see, if I put them further down the pipe, say about there, it's reducing the amount of um, twisting motion that I can get in the overall uh, suspension layout. So by keeping it in this area, it's going to look neater, putting them directly above each other. Now the other um, good point about putting it here is if you look at the picture of the real gun you'll notice that in this area here it appears to just have a metal connection, um, a, a piece of uh, steel welded across between the two pipes. So that will give it a bit of a look as though that's the same setup. In fact what I could do is I could uh, weld a piece of steel plate on the top of the swing arm to make it look wider and make it look more like the original. It will also tend to hide this bottom suspension unit down here. Okay, uh, I've been looking through my stocks of bits of piping and so on, and um, I've got various bits around here. And um, basically, I'm wanting to make some bushings which I can. Um, well, I want to make some swing arms. Now, all this junk, it all comes in useful, you see, that's why I keep all this junk. So I've got this um, one inch box section, 25 millimeter box section, which I've just chopped off um, some scrap I had in the, uh, in the garden. Um, so I'm going to use this as the arm part of the swing arms, and I need to weld some uh, round pipes on the end of this which I'll then pack with rubber and then probably have a smaller tube on the inside and then finish off on the um, on the pipe axle side of it I'll probably have a 10 millimeter bolt running through it 
and then on the other side where it's going to the um, where it's going to be mounted above the suspension unit I'm going to have a half inch um, well probably a 12 millimeter um, stub um, or a piece of studding running through it to support it at that end so I'm just looking for suitable bits of piping to use I may just go with this stuff I've, st I've started cutting these out at 30 millimeters um, in length this is just uh, wiring conduit galvanized wiring conduit and to be honest with you it might be strong enough um, I know it's only uh, say one point you know one three quarters maybe most two millimeters thick but it might do the job it's only going to be um, 250 kilos this uh, trailer and this is a, like a secondary arm it's not the main load bearing arm with a suspension on at the bottom this is really just uh, an arm to keep the two axles um, away from each other to set them at that um, well near, near around four inches apart so it could be well adequate that if I um, you can see where the seam is in the side of the pipe there if I was to weld the box section on on that side bracing across the seam it's probably going to do the job alternatively I do have some other piping lying around here which may have a similar size internal diameter but looking at it it looks too big to me so I'll have a poke around see what I come up with after a little bit of work I've then got two small suspension swing arms which I've made up so I did manage to find some heavier pipe it's about 2 mil, 2.5 mil on the wall slightly heavier than the uh, wiring conduit that I was first looking at um, I knew I had this but I was being a little bit mean and trying to hold on to this for uh, other projects because it's uh, been nice heavy wall on it it's good for um, things like uh, bolt actions on rifles and stuff like that you know uh, anyway so once I've done that I then need to make a bushing to go inside so what I've done is I've used some of this um, old rubber radiator piping which I've got uh, kicking about from uh, the old project on the tank putting a bike engine in so this is left over so what I've done is I've uh, first of all I've cut it into 30 millimeter um, sections and then what I've done is I've uh, I've cut through it on an angle so that when you roll it up it becomes um, a tube so I've cut through them angled as you can see there now you can then hammer it into the bushing this one's a an early one it's too narrow you see it's not 30 millimeters and uh, but but the actual uh, length oh I've dropped it but the actual uh, length of it is correct if I roll that out it's not very doesn't have to be very long it's about six centimeters in length Could probably work out uh, pi <laughs> the inside of it and, and do it that way if you really wanted to but it's um, really a bad job job isn't it um, so once you've uh, knocked it in it looks pretty much like that you can see um, it's curled round and then what I've done is I've knocked a piece of steel piping inside that side's not quite as neat it's sticking out a little bit but I could always trim that with a knife but 
to be honest, it's not going to matter, particularly once it's forced into the um, suspension position. It'll be fine. Um, yeah, so I've got the piece of tubing running through the centre, piece of steel pipe. Now, that's got a 10 millimeter hole in it. Um, did have an M10 bolt line around here, but in any case, I've got this uh, piece of studding which slides through it and uh, if I was to clamp that in there yeah, the old one-handed uh, do everything technique right um, if I slide that through there you should see the bushing gives the um, amount of flex which I just about want you can see the rubber compresses and works quite well. So, uh, you know, for the amount of use that the gun's going to be getting, um, it's not going to be out in a battle um, all year long. I think that's going to do the job. It saved me uh, several days hunting around for uh, bushings on the internet and waiting for the post to arrive, you know. It's done it. It's only a 250 kilo field gun at the end of the day, um, thereabouts. So it's going to do the job. Right, so I've now got these two small swing arms which I've made. And the idea is, as I said before, is these swing arms are going to be mounted just here above the original swing arm which is the sprung uh, in, uh, suspension unit now I'm basically stepping it back slightly this way but as long as I keep the distance between that point and that point that point and that point the same and that eight centimeter between the centers it should work correctly and um, it will be like a a trapezoid so should hopefully function now the next thing I'm going to do is I've well I've taken one of these large chunk of mild steel it is with a um, it's around about a 15 millimeter hole running through the center of it now I've sawn one of those in half to give me two pieces now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to make up some um, stub shafts with um, a thread on them so far and the last section of it is just going to be for the suspension arm to swing on and I'm going to weld these two stubs in each end of this um, scaffold pipe here which is the load bearing member so uh, I'll see how that goes the rear end of this I'm just going to put um, a very heavy weld around it and um, it should hopefully do the job these are a little bit loose inside the scaffold pipe but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some um, packing steel pipe around it to bridge the two differences in diameter and once it's all welded up there shouldn't be any real problem with it it should be quite solid hopefully anyway so these are the two stubs I've made up basically what I have here is I've got about 35 millimeters of unthreaded steel and here I've got a thread which is M16 by 1.5 thread so it's uh, a metric fine thread and I'm going to put uh, either a castle nuts or nylock nuts onto that unfortunately I didn't have any so I've had to order some off eBay Anyway, so these 
I've, uh, as I said, I've packed them with some um, piping to get them up to the right diameter. And I'm going to knock these in the ends there and then weld them between this section here and the pipe. 